Hello. In this video, I'll talk about some of the basic ways in which you interact with MATLAB and introduce some important vocabulary relative to MATLAB's operation. MATLAB is a powerful tool for analysis. It's commonly used in data analysis and for performing complex mathematical operations. Therefore, engineers often need to import data into MATLAB, write programs to perform the mathematical analyses, and save the results of those analyses. So there's a lot of information you need to keep track of, which files our data and programs are saved in, where those files are located, and where the results are stored. This video shows you the MATLAB tools we use to keep track of all of these pieces of information. When MATLAB is first opened, you see what is called the desktop. The desktop is the primary interface with which a user interacts with MATLAB. At the top of the desktop is a tool strip which provides direct access to some convenient MATLAB capabilities. I'm going to ignore the tool strip for the most part. Chances are that you can figure out for yourself what you might want to use it for. The current folder window is on the left side of the desktop. This window shows the files and folders that are in MATLAB's current working folder. Keeping track of the current working folder and its contents is very important. Later on, when we're writing programs and accessing data that's on disk, we'll see why this is. The path to the current working folder is shown in this text bar. If you want, you can change the current working folder by clicking on this icon and browsing to the desired location. For example, I can go to a folder named Testing, which is at the root folder of my C drive. We can use the current folder window to create and remove folders. To create a folder, right-click with your mouse button in the current folder window and select New Folder. I'll create a new folder named Temp in the current working folder. To remove a folder, right-click with your mouse on the folder and choose Delete from the resulting menu. This is the workspace window. The workspace is a chunk of computer memory where MATLAB will store the results of any computations, once I actually do some. In the lower right corner of the desktop is the Command History window. This window displays the commands that have been executed in MATLAB in the order in which they're executed. Finally, the command window is this big window in the center. MATLAB commands are typed at the command prompt, the two greater than signs here, and are executed by pressing the Enter key on your keyboard. If you're using the student version of MATLAB, you may see the letters EDU just before the command prompt. Don't let these letters bother you. They don't affect execution of any commands that I'll show you. The command window is the most important window on the desktop. Commands executed at the command prompt are the primary way to interact with MATLAB. In fact, the other windows are just there to help you keep track of what you're doing at the command window. As an example of how to use the command window, let's do a simple mathematical calculation. For example, if I type 2 plus 5 at the command prompt and then press the Enter key on the keyboard, MATLAB performs the operation and calculates the result as 7. The number 7 is now in the workspace. Think of the workspace as a chunk of memory that contains the results of your mathematical operations. In order to keep track of all these numbers, every number in the workspace has to have a name. If you don't specify a name yourself, MATLAB names the value ANS, which is short for answer. We don't have to let MATLAB assign all of our calculation results as ANS. We can provide our own variable names by using the assignment operator, which just happens to look a lot like an equal sign. Suppose we want to calculate 4 times 3 and save it as the variable name myVar. We type the variable name, myVar, followed by the assignment operator, an equal sign, and then the mathematical operation whose result we want to call myVar, 4 times 3, and press Enter. One thing to keep in mind is that in most cases, MATLAB commands are not sensitive to spaces in the expressions. To illustrate this, let's create another variable named myVar2, which is equal to 5 minus 3, but we'll scatter a few spaces around in the expression. The result is 2, as we'd expect. The extra spaces don't affect the result. Now let's talk a little bit about the workspace window. The workspace window displays all variables in the workspace. At the moment, the workspace window lists three variables, ANS, MyVar, and MyVar2, just as we'd expect. The values of these variables are also shown. 
If we want, we can use the workspace window to delete variables from the workspace. Simply select the variable you want to remove and press the delete key on your keyboard. We can also display the value of the variable directly in the command window by typing the variable name in the command window and pressing the enter key. Now let's multiply 3 times 6 and assign it to our variable name myvar. The MATLAB operator for multiplication is the asterisk, so we type myvar equals 3 asterisk 6 at the command window and press enter. As we expect, the result is 18 and is named myvar. However, redefining the variable myvar results in its old value being lost. If we want to get our previous value of myvar back, we would need to redo the original calculation. It's important to keep in mind that MATLAB only keeps the results of a calculation, not the steps used to create the result. Also notice that MATLAB doesn't allow you to go back and edit previous commands. If you need to redo a command, you have to re-execute it at the command prompt. The command history window keeps a list of all the commands you've executed, just in case you need to re-execute a previous command. Notice that all of my previous commands are listed here. If I want to redo the calculation of my first value for my var, I can drag the command with my mouse to the command window and press the Enter key on my keyboard. We can also access previous commands by pressing the up arrow key on your keyboard, which causes the command window itself to display the last command you executed. Successively pressing the up arrow cycles backwards through all the commands you've executed. The workspace can be saved to disk, and we can load saved data back to our workspace. The graphical user interfaces for these actions are the Save Workspace and Import Data icons on the Home tool strip. If you click on Save Workspace, you'll get a dialog box requesting a file name and a save location. Notice that the default file name is matlab.mat and the file is placed in the current working folder, as we can see from the current folder window. The process of importing data using the tool strip is very similar. Finally, let's look at how we can get help in MATLAB. To open the help window, simply click on this icon on the tool strip. A separate window opens, which allows you to look at MATLAB's documentation. From the help window, you can browse for topics or search for information on a specific topic or command. Familiarizing yourself with MATLAB's help documentation is time well spent. New users may find much of the information incomprehensible, but it will become more and more valuable to you as you gain familiarity with MATLAB. After watching this video, you should be able to use the command window to create variables in the workspace. You should also be able to use MATLAB's graphical user interfaces to create and remove folders, change MATLAB's current folder, view commands you've executed previously, view the variables in your workspace, and access MATLAB's help documentation. However, graphical user interfaces can be a relatively inefficient way of performing all of these operations. Personally, I prefer to do all of these actions by executing commands at the command window. The next video in this section demonstrates commands to perform the tasks presented in this video.